Hello, everybody. Welcome to this new episode of Reactor, the podcast. This is the fourth episode of a series of episodes on deep tech and climate tech startups 101, entrepreneurship 101. It's really, uh, you know, the guide, the course I needed most when I myself tried to launch a space startup a few years back already and uh, this is the guide when moving from an idea in a box an idea in your mind to an actual startup that makes money so this is the fourth episode and if you miss the previous previous episodes i encourage you to watch them first uh, the first one is on mindset the second one is on uh, transforming an, an idea into an execution, a plan, a real, a real thing. Third one is about pitching your idea, which is really interesting and important because you're gonna pitch a lot of time. This episode is the fourth one. It's about startups versus corporate, and um, especially about the big, big myth that you are not, as a startup, competing with. Corporate. We, a lot of founders believe that they're trying to compete with co big corporations, but in fact, they are not. You need each other. That's why we'll talk about today. So let, let's deep dive in directly into the misconceptions. When you're building a startups, it's easy to think, I need to beat the big guys. You're thinking about how to out innovate them, how to sell them, how to market them. But the truth is, your startups is not competing against those people, those corporations, those large global companies. In fact, you have different strengths, different goals, and different challenges. So your startups are agile. So your startup is agile. It is innovative. It is focused. Incorporates. They've been here for a long time. They have different trends, goals, and challenges. They are established already. You know, they don't need to prove it to, to, to the world that they, that they are worth something because they, they did it already. But they are slow moving, but they also have deep pockets, uh, you know, a logistics, infrastructure, money, and they also need fresh ideas. So this really creates a momentum, an opportunity for partnership and not competition. So why would a large corporate company, so large corporates like, you know, I'm just quoting names and no partnership in there, just Apple, IBM, Intel, there's so many, Atos, you know, there's so many, they need startups. And so even companies like Salesforce, which is in the CRM business, the customer relationship management, they have been here for decades already. But they are constantly buying startups and working with startups because they want to keep, they need your innovation. Those corporates need startups. They need innovation, agility. They need your ability, your ability to think outside the box. Innovation in large and complex companies is tough because they are often, you know, bogged down by internal processes layers of bureaucracy and the fear and a massive, massive fear of risk. On the other end, startups, you, the founders, you strive on risk and flexibility. You are able to experiment and pivot quickly. And so it makes you valuable to those big players. They are constantly looking for fresh new ideas, new tech, new services, new products, and new way to stay competitive. So that's where you come in. So now it's more obvious, but you know, I will dive into it, but you need corporates to survive. Why? You need on three topics, funding, validation, and resources. So resources, let's dive in first in this, into this one. Corporates, they have the capital, the distribution channels. So if you think about, like, for example, Amazon, you know, like the logistics is crazy. Or, or DHL, they have the infrastructure that startups often lack. 
So by partnering with a corporate, you can access their market because they already made their moves, you know, way before you existed. You can tap into their expertise and you can scale faster than you could on your own. Corporate partnerships can provide the funding and validation you need to prove that your concept work. That may even, the corporates may even invest in your startups and acquire technology. But remember, if they want your product, they will pay for it. Okay, let me repeat that. If they want your product, they will pay for it. You know, there is a huge debate about giving everything for free. Sure, give free trials, but then charge. You know, you're, you're you know, for free. You work, you don't work for free. You don't have to undercut or fight for their market. Instead, offer something so valuable that they can't ignore it. So how do now? How do you uh, make an irrest- irresistible offer? So how do you make yourself and your company irresistible to corporates? So it starts with creating a product or a service that they need, like they really need. They want and they need. So your offering should have a pain point uh, that you're targeting, a pain point that you identify, something that is so compelling that it, they cannot say no to. So here are a few tips for positioning your startups to attract corporate attention. Understand the pain points, research their challenges from inefficiencies to innovation gaps. Maybe that's the reason why your company, you know, exists in the first place. Tailor your pitch to show that you can, how you can solve those specific problems and how you can do it better. Show tractions, you know, corporates, they want proof that the solution works. Demonstrate that you're having, you know, you pay attention and you are paying customers already, partnerships or all other sign of growth free trials, for example. Then, you know, one of the problem usually with startups is that they often think that there are countless startups out there doing exactly the same. Maybe some startups out there are solving the same problem as you are, but you are unique. You know, I don't mean to, you know, give you, put you on a pedestal, you know, on something like very unique and give you a pride, but you are your own team. You are doing things the, the way you are doing them. You are unique in that way. And you are building a solution that no, you know, no one else out there is building. So what makes your solution better than what maybe they already like they, what do you mean? They, uh, the corporates already have in house or they can build themselves or they can buy from someone else. Focus on your unique value proposition. Finally, be ready for scale. So when you're a startup, it's hard to imagine that because you're just focusing on the first step, just sell. But the corporates, they operate at a global level at a much different scale than you. And so make sure your solution can grow with them, you know. And for example, whether it's infrastructure, support, scalability, show that you're prepared. You might not be ready at you know the time of signature, and that's okay that they don't expect you to. But then show that you will be partners for a long time. So there are countless examples of startups out there. For example, the one that comes to mind is uh, the company which is Tableau, which is um, an updated and new version of. Uh, of a CRM being bought by the, the leader of the industry, which is Salesforce. And so the company stayed, you know, um, the same internally, but that's this kind of a startup corporate partnership that work very well. There are many, many uh, different partnerships. And if you think about, you know, Tesla, Apple, they acquire some, always acquire smaller startups for technology innovation or the investing. Like you can, what, what you see with Intel Ignite, which is a, a corporate program for Intel that is really giving all away almost like for free to help the startups thrive. And it's really along the business lines of Intel. It's for sure it's in Intel interest to help the startups, but then 
if the startups succeed and the, you know the team makes great progress intel is buying or investing or acquiring the entire company so those partnerships are mutually beneficial startups get funding get resources corporates get innovation and try to stay on the first page of innovation in their industry. So your goal is really to position yourself as a startup, as a critical partner in the innovation strategy of some corporates. You're not replacing them, you're helping them evolve. So that's, a, you know, that's a, let's say, that's great. You might say, you know, how do I do that in, uh, in, in the real life? So how do you start engaging with corporates? So let me give you a step-by-step -step approach. So first, do warm introductions. So try to build relationship with corporates, players, before you need them. You know, start talking to them, reach out through networks, events, social media, industry groups to get to be on their radar very early in the process. Then. Second step is really provide value early. So before asking anything, asking for anything and especially money, demonstrate value. Share your insights, your expertise about the domain you are in. Offer free trials or collaborate on small project, paying project, but uh, paid project, but not the long term relationship that you want to establish, but you want to get started and get a, a foot in the, in the ground and, and get, get uh, third step is really pitch with data. So the corporates, you know, they, they, it's not, it's not a myth. They spend a lot of time relying on data and in meetings, analyzing those data. And so they make data driven decisions. So when pitching, use metrics case studies and you know concrete numbers to make your case and show that you know your stuff and you know that there's a win-win situation there first step is stay in touch you know even if a corporate is not ready to engage today stay on their radar try to be very proactive in this kind of, even if they never answer reach out to them keep them updated on your progress and continue to nurture a human relationship, it's really about this. It's really like a human thing. You're trying to create trust and create long-term partnership with the corporate. So to summarize what I said, startups and corporates aren't enemies. They need each other. Startups bring innovation, agility, and corporates, they bring resources and scale. So the key is to create something that but it's so valuable that a corporate can say no. You know, try to be that missing chain in their value chain that they say, okay, we need to work with the startups to be, uh, you know, above the competition. That's it for today. That's it for the fourth episode of this series of probably 10 episodes about deep tech and climate tech startups entrepreneurship 101 but thanks for jo joining me on this on another episode next time i'll talk about selling when you have nothing to show for yet that's really a key part and uh, usually one of the questions i get a lot of time so if you're liking this series don't forget to subscribe share uh, drop your thought in the comments below and i'll see you next time and until next time remember Startups of the future, but corporates can help you get there. See ya.